In this video, we'll discuss how Euler solutions can really help us analyze nonlinear systems. So we know from autonomous equations that equilibrium solutions are really important to figuring out how we can analyze autonomous equations. The same is going to apply for systems as well. So we know how to find these solutions, and we now want to analyze how they affect overall solutions. Now for equations, we know things were increasing reducing in between, and that was fine. But for systems, we were not quite as lucky. It's not quite as simple as that idea. And we can sort of think back to another way to approach autonomous equations as a way to analyze this. And the idea was the following. If I have an autonomous equation, say dy dt was f of y, and I find an equilibrium solution, I know f at that point is zero. We also saw that based on how the graph sketching of that worked, right, if f prime at my equilibrium solution was positive when it's zero, that means I'm negative below and positive above, this means it's an unstable equilibrium solution. And if f prime was negative, that gave me that it was asymptotically stable. And one way to think about this is via the linearization of this function f, or the tangent line, at this point. Right? If we think about doing a Taylor series expansion or just a tangent line expansion, we know that we can approximate f of y by f at y0 plus f prime at y0 times y minus y0. If I know this is zero, that goes away. And I'm left with dy dt is effectively a number times y. We know how that behaves. If the number is positive, I get growing exponentials that go away from zero. If the number is negative, I get decay exponentials that come in towards zero. Right? For dy dt is a times y, we know that zero is unstable if a is positive, and it's asymptotically stable if a is negative, because the solution here is just c times e to the a t, which goes away if a is positive or comes in if a is negative. We didn't really talk about autonomous equations this way because we didn't really need to, but this is the way we're going to have to visualize systems to be able to do the same sort of process. And this idea is called linearization. So we're going to linearize the nonlinear system around the equilibrium solution to then get to what's going to happen near that point. And so we're going to have a system of the following. We're going to take dx dt is f of xy and dy dt is g of xy and assume that the point a b is the equilibrium solution. And now what we're going to do is we're going to approximate these functions f of xy and g of xy by their tangent planes around this point. You can see this as a tangent plane or as a multivariable Taylor series expansion. But the idea that we get is then this function f of xy, I can approximate by f at the point a, b, plus partial in x at a, b times x minus a, plus partial in y at a, b times y minus b. And then if you want, there's higher order terms there that are of order squared. And similarly for g. Now because we're assuming that we have an equilibrium solution, we know that both of these here are zero. So the idea then is that I can approximate the system I had above, I can approximate this entire thing by replacing it by the approximations above. So dx dt is going to be fx at a b times x minus a plus fy at a b times y minus b, and same thing for y. And then as a final step, if I let u be the variable x minus a and v be y minus b, then dx dt and du dt are the same because a and b are constants. And so this means that I can rewrite this system here as du dt equals fx times u plus fy times v and dv dt is gx times u plus gy times v, and this now is a linear constant coefficient system that is autonomous and homogeneous. So the idea is to apply our linear analysis techniques to this guy here, and use that to sort of determine what's going to happen near the equilibrium solution A, B. This all comes back to, you know, derivatives and tangent line approximations, because we're basically saying, if I am close enough to this equilibrium solution, 
then my f basically behaves like this tangent plane. And so if I'm close enough to this a, b point, then I know that my system should behave like this linear system. And I can use it to say, is it going to be f to be stable? Is it going to be unstable? What's going to happen near that point? I can get that out of approximating by this linear system and then analyzing what happens to that system on its own. So as sort of summarizing this topic, if we have this autonomous system in this form and let a be equal solution, the linearization is the system defined by du dt is fx at a b times u plus fy at a b times v and dv dt is gx at that point times u plus gy at that point times v. Right, these are all numbers, so it's a constant coefficient linear system that's homogeneous. And the point is this linear system describes the behavior of the nonlinear system near this equilibrium solution. It basically gives our replacement for the idea of increasing and decreasing for autonomous equations. Now we have that this system is going to describe how is it going to approach this equilibrium solution? Is it going to approach it's going to go away? All that stuff is now embedded in this linear system, which we want to solve and analyze to figure out how the nonlinear system is going to behave near that point. As a side note, this does not describe behavior far away from this equilibrium solution, only right near it. I'll see the concept of an example what this might look like, what it might be needed to do for this sort of problems. So on a finalization of this system around the point 2, 2. So we can see from these two terms here that 2, 2 will be the equilibrium solution. If I plug in 2 here, I get 0. And if I plug in 2 and 2 here, I also get 0. But now to find the linearization, I need to find the four derivatives, fx, fy, gx, and gy, where this here is f and this here is g. So the partial derivative of fx is just going to be y minus 4 because I'll get a 1 from the first term and then if I differentiate the second I get 0. fy is going to be just x minus 2. gx is going to be y plus 3. And for gy I actually get a product rule here. I'm going to get negative 1 times y plus 3 and then plus an x minus y times 1. And to find linearization, I just want to plug in my equilibrium solution, this 2, 2, into all of these functions. So I will get that fx at 2, 2 is 2 minus 4 is negative 2. fy at 2, 2 is 2 minus 2 is 0. gx at 2, 2 is 2 plus 3 is 5. And gy at 2, 2 is negative 5 plus 0. So that means the linearization is du dt is negative 2u and dv dt is 5u minus 5v or in a different form it is x vector prime where x is now the vector u v on top of each other equals the matrix minus 2 0 5 minus 5 times x and that we know how to analyze this will be a nodal sink at this point it's triangular so that will be minus 2 and minus 5. That means I would get the thought that maybe for this nonlinear system, this point behaves like a nodal sink. So it's just sort of funnel in towards this value. That's the idea of using linearization to analyze nonlinear systems, how we can use this process to take a nonlinear system, find equilibrium solutions, and then analyze them to figure out in general how is this going to behave near that if I can analyze linearization around the equilibrium.